The 1980s in France, boardrooms filled with tension, whispers of hostile takeovers in the air. And at the center of it all stood Bernard Arnault, eyes set on the ultimate prize, LVMH. At that time, Louis Vuitton, Moet, and Chandon, and Hennessy were prestigious brands, but they operated independently under a loosely connected umbrella. Arnaud, fresh from his strategic acquisition of Dior, saw an opportunity. He didn't just want a piece of luxury, he wanted to dominate it. With his engineering precision and a mind sharpened by business, Arnaud set his sights on consolidating LVMH into the largest luxury empire the world had ever seen. Behind the scenes, Arnaud was slowly acquiring shares in LVMH, gaining control bit by bit. But it wasn't enough just to own the stock. Arnaud needed power. He needed to oust the current leadership. His moves were subtle at first, attending shareholder meetings, carefully aligning himself with key decision makers. But it was all part of his grand strategy. The key player standing in his way? Henry Rackamere, the president of Louis Vuitton, who had a fierce hold on the brand. Arnaud, however, was a master strategist. Using a series of covert maneuvers, he began rallying the board against Rakamir, whispering promises of a united and powerful LVMH. In 1989, Arnaud made his move. He quietly bought enough shares to gain majority control and forced a confrontation at a board meeting. The scene was tense. Rakamir, blindsided by Arnaud's accumulation of power, fought back, but it was too late. Arnaud had already planted the seeds of doubt within the board, and the pieces were in place. Arnaud launched his coup, ousting Rakamier and taking over as CEO of LVMH. The takeover was swift, decisive, and executed with precision, much like the chess games Arnaud was known to enjoy. The press dubbed him the Wolf in Kashmir, a fitting nickname for a man who moved quietly but with deadly intent. In one of the most iconic corporate coups in business history, Arnaud had transformed LVMH from a collection of independently run brands into a luxury empire that spanned fashion, jewelry, and wines. His victory didn't just reshape LVMH, it reshaped the entire luxury market. Under Arnaud, LVMH expanded rapidly, acquiring legendary names like Fendi, Sephora, and Tiffany & Company, creating a behemoth that would control every aspect of luxury from fashion to fine wine. Arnaud's corporate coup was not just a business move, it was a statement. A man who had grown up in the peaceful countryside of northern France had now conquered the most prestigious luxury empire in the world. But Arnaud wasn't done. His next move? Expanding LVMH even further and ensuring that the brand would dominate for generations to come. The rise of Bernard Arnaud wasn't just about business, it was about power, legacy, and precision. He had built an empire through cold calculation, ruthless moves, and an unmatched vision for the future of luxury. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more stories from the world of fashion, business, and innovation. Until next time, stay stylish.